So we've had the theory of how RC networks work, specifically as low and high pass filters. Now to put it into practice. Let me show you the two circuits I'll be using. So recall our RC network circuit. You connect your power through a resistor, through a capacitor, and into the ground, positive through to negative. If you take your voltage across the resistor, you have a high pass filter. If you take your voltage across the capacitor, you have a low pass filter. And recall that I said, it doesn't matter which order these two are in. That's true, it doesn't, when there's only one filter. Recall Kirchhoff's voltage law, the loops. There's one loop here. So it doesn't matter what order it's in, it's gonna have the same effect. What matters is which voltage you take, because voltage is a difference. So it doesn't matter technically what voltage is at this spot relative to ground. It's what voltage is across the resistor or across the capacitor. The same way if you have a switch, a resistor, and an LED, it doesn't matter what order you put those in, it will light the LED the same way. But we're going to do two filters in a row, and now it'll matter. So let's say we have our positive, and then we have our resistor and a capacitor, and then another resistor and another capacitor. Both capacitors connect to negative. We have a junction and a junction. So the power is going to go through the resistor into this capacitor, which is stage one of the filter. Through this one, stage two of the filter, and this is your output voltage, of course, relative to zero. So we can measure across this capacitor if we wanted, and that would give us one application of a low-pass filter. And if we measure across this one, it's essentially applied two filters. Now you might look at this and say, well, this is just a series resistance. So why do you need two resistors? There are subtle effects here. This is essentially a voltage divider. You might say Kirchhoff's law doesn't work with capacitors. They don't work the same. But it does if you freeze frame. Kirchhoff's law is always a freeze frame. The current and voltage law. So you can say that each of these capacitors has a voltage drop based on its charge. How much charge is across the capacitor and which side is charged positive or negative. Or you can think of it as current. Pick a moment in time. Let's say that these are charging or discharging. The voltage across each resistor is based on the current. And if we draw our loops, we have a loop through here, which involves only one resistor. We have a loop through here, which involves both resistors. Now, let's not get into analyzing this too much. That's not the purpose here. The purpose is just to point out there are interactions. There's two different loops that involve the same resistor. These currents are determined by these capacitors, which affects how much current is going through here, which affects how much voltage is across the resistors. So the point is, this is not just a series resistance. There's stuff going on. So this is essentially one and two low pass filters. We can do the same thing, flip them. And now measuring the voltage across this resistor or this resistor, we have one or two high pass filters. It's just which one you're measuring across and you have to have it like this or it won't work right. When there's one filter, it doesn't matter. When there's more than one, it does. And now the first time I'm putting my new oscilloscope on video. So I have here two 1K resistors, 1000 ohms each, and I have two one microfarad capacitors. So if I do an RC network, recall that the time constant is the resistance times the capacitance. So the resistance is 1000 ohms. The capacitance is one over one million farads. So 1000 divided by a million is one over a thousand. Point 001, or in this case, one millisecond. Now, why one millisecond? Because I'm using an Arduino to output PWM, pulse width modulation, which switches 505050 volts back and forth, and its duty cycle is actually two milliseconds. It's 500 hertz, so 1000 milliseconds divided by 500 is two. So it'll complete one on-off cycle every two milliseconds. I have it configured for 50%, so it's on half the time, off half the time for its two millisecond duty cycle. So that means one millisecond, it's giving a five volt. One millisecond, it's giving a zero volt. So recall that fully charging and discharging a capacitor is about five times its time constant, but I'm doing only one. So I'm interrupting it so I get a more useful waveform. And I'm going to power the Arduino with a wall wart that has only two plugs, no ground pin, in the power socket, in my extension cord. So that means it will be safe to use my oscilloscope on. So I will plug in the Arduino. I will connect the ground pin to a negative trace. 
on my breadboard, digital pin 3, which is what's outputting the PWM, to a positive trace. Now for the oscilloscope. I'm still working on a good setup for putting everything on my table. I'm probably going to have to elevate the oscilloscope because it doesn't tilt very much. So for right now, please bear with me. So here's the oscilloscope. I suppose that's mostly visible. We'll go with it for now. So the yellow is signal 1 and the green is signal 2 the way I have it plugged in. Now the oscilloscope probe, this is the ground plug, the ground clip, whatever you want to call it. The reason it's on here is you're supposed to have the shortest distance possible for an accurate measurement. We're using breadboard, so accuracy is not the prime concern, but still. So I will clip the ground plug onto one of my header wires. Now, because the Arduino and the breadboard are not connected to earth ground at all, these can effectively work as differential probes. I can connect the ground plug to any point I want, and that is just the reference voltage, and the oscilloscope will treat that as zero. And then this just becomes a fancy voltmeter. So normally this is supposed to be connected to the negative of the power or whatever, but in this case I'll just connect it to the reference voltage for measuring across whatever I want. So the only time you actually really need differential probes is for more accurate measurement across one item, or if you have to deal with earth grounding. The other end has this fancy little attachment, because the probe is just this, it's a little pinpoint, which is great, that's why they call it a probe once again. But for me, I put this on and it's a hook. I don't know if you can see the little hook coming out. This is meant to hook around the leg of a resistor or a capacitor or a pin of an integrated circuit or whatever. But for me, I'm just going to use another wire. And I've used red for the ground and black for the power, so let's redo that. So I'll use a black one for the ground clip. And then the red one, you just pop out this little thing carefully this is expensive, and it'll clip around the wire. So now I can use it just like the voltmeter, and you can see the loop is now a lot longer with these two wires, so we're going to get silly numbers. But if I put the positive into the PWM signal and the negative into the ground of the Arduino, and then I press auto scale, I get a very odd signal. Let me try something here. If I put the positive, as in the PWM signal, across a resistor, and then the negative into ground and then measure across the resistor, I get the same thing. Turns out it was just a loose wire, so don't have the same problem I had. If you're using this little hook tip, make sure to press it on firmly. Not firmly enough to damage it, but firmly enough to make sure that the hook part is actually connected to the probe underneath. So you can see my PWM signal here. Let me turn off the green and then auto scale again. And apparently it insists on reading a green signal. We'll be using that later. So anyway, what we have here is, if I center it, the middle is zero. So there's your zero volts. And then it says up here five volts. So I don't know if you can see, now yeah, you should be able to. The grid, vertically, if that says five volts, then every square is five volts. So we've got zero, five, 10, 15. So we can see zero, five, zero, five. And over here, it says 500 microseconds. So every horizontal grid line is 500 microseconds. So 500 plus 500 is 1,000 microseconds or one millisecond, recall? So then we have two, one millisecond, two milliseconds for the period. So it's working. And then we can do that to see it a little better. So this is the PWM signal unmodified. Now, let me pull out my meter from the circuit and I will now do the low pass filter. So the PWM input, I will plug into a resistor. The other side of that resistor, I will plug into one side of a capacitor. That capacitor output, I will connect to ground. But also, the output of that resistor, or the input of that capacitor, I'll do the input of the capacitor so it's closer to the capacitor. That won't matter too much on a breadboard. The junction between the resistor and capacitor, the first one, goes into the second resistor. The output of that resistor goes into the second capacitor, then the output of that capacitor goes to ground. So let me now measure across the first resistor. Should generally put the ground one in first, I suppose. And you see the funkiness? So now I'm going to do the proper thing, measure across the capacitor. So I put the positive lead into the input of the first capacitor and the ground plug into the output. And look at this waveform we get. So I will now take my second probe, the green one, make sure that it's connected this time, and I'll use a red wire for positive, a green wire for negative, just because that's pretty. So now I'll just do the negative and positive of the input signal. And I will superimpose it by turning on the green. So let's auto scale. And we can see both signals, but they're separated. This is something the oscilloscope does because it doesn't know whether or not I'm reading signals that are modifications of each other. I could be comparing 
two different whatevers. So it by default separates them. So if I just press this and this, it zeroes both. So now the middle is zero. So we can see the original signal is going zero volts, five volts, zero volts, five volts, and this one is up here. Oh, in fact, they're actually at different scales. There we are. Now it makes more sense. I wish I could get them to scale similarly, but let me put that one there and that one there. That's close enough. So we can see that this would be zero and this would be five, and then this signal is in between. Recall, I'm partially charging and discharging the capacitor. I'm only giving it one time constant, not the full five, so it can't fully. So it's actually stuck in between. But this, you can see, from the square wave, we're smoothing it out. So now, instead of measuring the original signal and the first filter, let's measure the first and second filter. This is a mess, but that's signature for me. So I'll take the green. Luckily, they come with these little color strips. And I will remove the green from there. And I will now put the green signal across the second capacitor. And if we observe, auto scale, center it. Now that shouldn't be happening. I love when I test this before recording and then it doesn't work when recording. So the first diagnostic step is remove the probes and test with just one signal to make sure I'm not accidentally shorting something. So I will measure only across the second capacitor. And as we can see, I was right. So it was actually the metering that was doing it. If I measure only the signal, you can see it's very smooth now. And there, I shrink the horizontal and we can see that it was a bit triangular in the previous one, and now it's much more smooth. Let me bring this down a little bit so I can expand it, and you can see it's much less triangular and a little more smooth. So that's the second low-pass filter getting back to that sine wave. I would like to superimpose the signals, but apparently there's a little too much competition, and it's actually affecting the circuit, so we can only do one at a time. But that's all right. You get the point. You can see how successive filters work. So now... I'm going to redo this wiring. That was the low pass filter, now let's do the high. So I will take the PWM signal, bring it into a capacitor. The capacitor output into a resistor, the resistor other side into the ground. Then I will take the output of the first capacitor, put it into the second resistor, then I will take the connection between capacitor and resistor, and I will connect it to the input of the second capacitor. The output of the capacitor into the second resistor, and that resistor output into ground. So we'll now just use the yellow signal. I will measure across the first resistor, because recall in a high pass filter, we're measuring across the resistor. The low pass, we're measuring across the capacitor. Auto scale, turn the green back off. I wish I could get it to not turn on. It's probably in the manual. I'm still learning this thing. So let's center it, scale it up a little bit, and we can see. This is the voltage across the resistor. So what's happening here is the voltage switches. In this case, it'll switch to high. So the current goes up, which means the voltage across the resistor goes up. And then as the capacitor charges, it starts rejecting current. The current goes down, voltage across the resistor goes down. Then the voltage switches to zero. Before it's managed to actually finish charging, down here, the current across the resistor is in reverse. Because here the current is going from the positive PWM signal through the capacitor and resistor into the ground. And here, the current is discharging through the capacitor back into the zero PWM signal, and it's pulling current in reverse through the resistor. So we have charging, discharging, charging, discharging, and this is a high pass filter. So recall our square wave, which I should be able to measure as a second signal. It worked last time. Famous last words, it worked last time. But if I plug this in, auto scale this time I want the green on, there we are. Center, center, scale that up. So they're both on two volts. So you can see when the PWM signal is high, we're charging. When it's low, we're discharging. And this goes from zero to five to zero to five volts. But now we have negative voltage, which is safe because it's an Arduino. It's designed to sync current, so it can go both ways. But now we're actually getting pulses on both sides. And if you wanted pulses on only one side, you could use a rectifier circuit. Just use a diode, or even better, a full bridge rectifier, and you would get a pulse, a pulse, a pulse, a pulse, all positive, so it'd go five to zero, five to zero, five to zero. Or if you wanted zero to five pulses, you could flip the signal and the full bridge rectifier, however you like. But you can see this is how the high pass filter is working because see the sharp edges here where the voltage is changing rapidly, it's higher. And then here where it's quiescent, it's going down and down. The Fourier separation, the biggest values are at wherever the PWM signal is switching. And the lowest values are before it switches. And then we get a high one again. So now I will remove the green signal since we know that that is bad. So I'll turn off the green. And now 
I will change the yellow signal to measure across the second resistor instead of the first. So the ground plug on the output, this plug on the input, and we can see it's sharper, much sharper. I'm going to try and see, because it did work last time. See if I can do both resistors at the same time without messing up the signal. Ah, lucky day. So this one works. So you can see the green is the first. Let me go ahead and auto scale. Try and get it a little smoother. Center, center, scale up, scale up. And I'm going to just hit single so the display is not shaking like that. The green signal is the first low pass filter. The yellow is the second. Can you see that the low part is closer to zero? See? The low part here, low part here is closer to zero on both sides. And then the yellow, see it's further and further away from the zero line. In the yellow, the one with two filters. So it's getting sharper. So we're getting stronger pulses. And that is the high and low pass filter. Let me try and increase this so we can see better. Can you see? Roughly anyway. The green is lower and higher. The yellow is lower and higher in the opposite way. For the higher signal, let's set back down. So that is two successive high pass filters. And do remember to discharge your capacitors. In this case, there's only five volts. So it's not going to hurt you if you touch it, but it'll still short circuit and might fry the capacitor if the current is too high. Or you could have a charged capacitor in your bag of low capacitors, bag or box or whatever you store them in. And if you happen to use it a day later when it might still have some charge and you plug it into a circuit while you're building the circuit, it might discharge while you're assembling the circuit. So just be careful. But in any case, that's the demonstration. So the purpose of doing this I mean, RC circuits are going to be used everywhere, but the primary purpose is for my DC to AC generator. So as you can see, if I use successive low-pass filters on a PWM signal, I will get close to a sinusoidal wave. That's what I want. So I want to take a PWM signal generated digitally with an Arduino, and I want to get a roughly sinusoidal one out of that. And I'm going to have to bias and scale it, so that'll be future videos. But the idea is never touching an inductor, not a motor, not a generator, never touching actual AC. I want to take a pure digital signal and nothing but transistors and capacitors and resistors, the standard building blocks of everything, and from that make AC, and then use that AC to demonstrate turning it back into DC. So while I go do that, I'll be seeing you.